this is not um, one of my normal videos, a homily or a teaching video as such. This video is meant to be um, a personal message. Uh, first of all, a message of, of gratitude. I, I want to express my thanks. And then I, I just want to share a couple of reflections. Um, at the end of December, I, quite surprisingly for myself, was taken into hospital and um, I had uh, heart surgery, open heart surgery. And while I was in hospital and since, I have been inundated with messages of, of support, assurances of prayer. Um, I know people in my parish have been praying for my, my bishop has served at least two malevans for me. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am for all of this, but especially for your prayers. So thank you very much. And please forgive me if you message me and I haven't got back to you yet. I think I've, I've probably responded to less than a hundred of the messages. Um, and for this, I'm sorry, but thank you all very much for, for your, your support. And your assurances of prayer. Um, this little cross that God has given me has brought me many blessings. I'm very grateful to God for the extraordinary blessings I've received through this experience. Not least because it's reminded me just of how much we need to give thanks for. All of us need to live in a condition of of gratitude to God and within this gratitude for the many things we thank God for one of the things we must give thanks for is simply our, our membership our belonging to the body of Christ belonging to the church for so many reasons of course because this is where salvation is to be found this is where we encounter Christ fully but also, the realisation that I've had is that when we are sick and when we are facing death, as we all will, and when we die, we are assured that we will be prayed for. So many people are dying in our world all the time without anyone to pray for them. It's, it's such a horrific thought. And yet we know that as members of the church, even if we have no immediate family, the church will pray for us. And this assurance should bring us some peace. It is so important that when we die, we are surrounded by prayer, that we, we come before God being prayed for. So let's hold on to this assurance and let us give thanks to God that we have this in our lives and let us of course pray for those who are sick and those who have died I also want to give thanks for the NHS the NHS here in the UK particularly in England the the health service in England it's different in Wales and, and Scotland and so on but my experience has been nothing but positive. I know there are many faults and people wait very long times for appointments and it's not, it's far from perfect. And certainly I know in America there are many people who are suspicious of a national health service. But I can say from my own experience, just eight days, eight days after discovering that there was a problem, I was having surgery. And then they, they kept me in for seven more days of care. And I was given a great deal of medication. And I've come away from this without any great financial bill. But with a sense of gratitude also for the, the extraordinary care that I was shown. And a care that was shown not just by the, of course, the doctors with their great expertise in the surgery and so on. But the nurses who worked tirelessly to care for strangers. I remember one point being aware of all these people around me that were so busy, so active, 
and all of their effort, all of their work was focused on keeping me alive, for which I was very grateful. And I felt almost ashamed, very humbled that these people, because of their jobs, could give so much care and support and concern for complete strangers in this way, to work tirelessly. And it should be really an inspiration for all of us as Christians, that people can show such care and that we should imitate this care for each other, and for everyone in the world. And the, the other blessings that I've received through this experience, I suppose, have been more personal in a sense. First, it's been a, a great lesson in patience. I'm now, I've been home four weeks and I did anticipate to be further along in, in the healing process. I assumed after a couple of weeks I could be writing and I could be doing this sort of thing, but the reality is I, I'm having to learn patience and I'm very grateful for that. Patience to just be still and wait. Let healing take its course. But I'm also very grateful for this experience in one way that it has taught me how we, we must not rush to interpret, to, to, want, to think that we understand what it is God is doing with us and how God is working in our lives. Sometimes we will never understand the way things are working out. And of course, God, the mystery of God is beyond our, our fathoming. The thoughts of God are not the thoughts of man. And so, when things happen in our lives, we mustn't rush to an interpretation, a conclusion of, of what it means and what it is God is doing with us. I'm still in that experience, that process of, of interpreting what has felt like a very profound experience. Um, eight, the eight days before my surgery, while I was in the hospital, I had nothing but a prayer book, a prayer open and the philokalia, and... And, and to be honest, it was bliss. I had no pressure, I had no demands. For eight days, all I did was read and pray. What a blessing. And I went into the surgery in a state of complete peace about whatever happened. I felt ready for death. I felt ready for the operation. I had no anxiety of any kind, and I, I was very grateful for this. But then following the operation, I'm not sure if it was three days or four days, I had a very difficult time. And of course, the withdrawal of the anaesthetic, the, the impact of the physical invasion of the body to have the chest sore open and opened in that way. Of course, it will have had a, a physical and, and a psychological effect on me. I was aware of this. And yet, it was also a, a tremendous spiritual battle that I entered for. I, I'm not sure if it was three or four days. Certainly for three days I, I could sleep for no more than two or three hours a day. I couldn't lie down in a bed. It was too painful and I won't go into the details of the, the particulars of the, the spiritual conflict that I felt I'd entered. But when I came through that particular experience I jumped to the conclusion that that time of peace and preparation really was, was something of an illusion, or that a delusion, and that the reality of the spiritual life was only to be found in the absolute struggle, the pain, and the demands of the, of the, of the, the confrontation, the battle that I'd entered after the operation. But as time has gone on, I've realised that it was both. God was blessing me in both, and God's presence was in both. There are times when God will grant us peace, or grant us times of preparation. You know, even our Lord had a period of fasting in preparation for his ministry. And so, only with time am I beginning to really understand a little of what God has been doing with me. And I'm very grateful for that. But it has encouraged me not to jump to conclusions. To conclusions about what it is God is doing with us. And 
I suppose I, I should say something about these videos themselves. The, the previous four videos that I've, I've recently uploaded, they were made in November. I, for 10 years I've been uploading these videos and I've only ever made one in a week at any time. And for a reason I couldn't explain, throughout November I was making a couple of videos every week and I had a, a little file with four videos ready and I didn't know what I was going to do with them. And then suddenly I found myself going into hospital. And now I'm unable to walk in the fields and the trees for a little while. And up until now I've had no speaking voice. The tubes from the ventilator temporarily damaged my vocal cords. And it's improving, I can now speak. <clears throat> it's not as strong as it was, um, but my voice is returning and I'm very grateful for that. So I, I, I've been unable to speak, I've been unable to walk, and certainly unable to prepare anything. And I had this little backlog of videos to upload. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And again, I mustn't jump to interpretation and conclusion of what it is God's doing. But I would say one thing, which is, if I'm, I'm, I'm reflecting personally on things, a number of people have commented on my great wisdom in these videos and so on. And it's not true. All of my videos... They do contain wisdom, but I can say that with any pride or ego, because that wisdom is not mine. It's the wisdom of the Church Fathers, it's the wisdom of the Orthodox Church that I'm simply presenting. So any wisdom that you have found in these videos, please don't attribute it to me in any way. I'm simply reading and sharing the wisdom of the Church Fathers that you will find in all Orthodox churches. So this experience, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for all of your prayers, for all of the support and kindness that I've, I've been shown. I'm grateful for this lesson in patience. In three weeks or so, I've been told I may be able to drive short distances. And I'm hoping by then I will be able to walk out again and enjoy the fields and the woods I begin making videos outside and until then hopefully I'll be able to record the odd video in here until I can do them properly again. And I'm, gra I'm grateful for this, this lesson in patience. I'm grateful that God has reminded me not to jump to conclusions about what it is God's doing in our lives. And I'm grateful especially for his calling to me and to all of us to be part of his church, to know him, to draw close to him, and to be assured not just of his love and hope of salvation, but the prayer, the support of prayer that we can offer each other. 